right, so the first is to use uh, like natural light or sunlight, like you say you don't have any flashes. So I normally use my hand when I'm determining light because you can treat each of your fingers like a cylinder. So you can just sit there and rotate until you see the shadows where you would want them. So I pretend like the front of my hand is the person's face and then I'll just rotate it until I start to see shadows and then I know I want to stand here and have the person here facing me. So, and, I'll, and it works better in sunlight because you can see the shadows. But uh, like a basic portrait principle if you want the person to look flattering is to have um, you pay attention to the, to the dark side of the face. So you want at least a triangle of light hitting their opposite side. So if you're perfectly straight, it doesn't really reveal much of the facial features. And if you're too far to the left, you only see half and the rest is in shadow. So you want kind of like a three quarters where you can see some of both, but you're starting to see shadow. So if it's really bright, direct sunlight, you'll get hard shadows. And you want the nose shadow to either connect all the way with the shadow of the cheek so you get a triangle here, or you want to turn them far enough that the nose shadow almost disappears. So it's not straight on, but just a little bit to the side. But if you have it in between where you see a lot of the nose shadow, but it doesn't connect to the cheek, you have a line of, of sunlight going through, it, it normally looks really harsh and garish, and it doesn't, it's not a very flattering look. So an alternative, if you have uh, just sunlight, is to use a reflector. So this this uh, folds up pretty small, and I actually keep this in my bag at all times, even if I haven't taken my flashes, because it folds up so small, you can just have it at any time, and you can use this as like a fill. So I'll use the silver side to demonstrate. So like right now, I probably have a bit of darkness on this side of my face, but if I hold this up, then it starts to lighten that side of my face. And so you can either, if it's a close, portrait where you're only seeing the person's head, you can have them hold it themselves and oftentimes it'll be out of the picture. Or if there's something you can lean it against or the best is to actually have an assistant or a, um, you can get a little arm that fits on these fold up stands that will hold it for you. But if it's windy, which it always is here, then <laughs> that doesn't really work. Uh, so like when, when I, I did some portraits in Finland and, the, and I was just using sunlight so the first thing I did is figured out the angle that I wanted the person to be. So I sat them in, in that angle so that the light was kind of coming in in this direction. And then it was direct sunlight, so I had them actually hold the reflector like this. And it bounced enough of the light on their face that none of the shadows were too dark. And this was out of the picture, so you couldn't, couldn't really see it. Um, that's like the, uh, the best way to work. So if you, if you have nothing, if all you have is the light, you try and pick the most flattering angle, and then the next best is to have some kind of reflector. And even like white paper can work sometimes. So if you don't have one of these, you can take a piece of typing paper or a piece of like uh, any kind of white cardboard you can find and, and hold that and use it as kind of a, a, a semi-reflector. So I actually want to see if I can do some, uh, like how I would do that. So, so you, do you want to be my sure. model? You, all right. You're the best looking one, so. There you go. Thank you. All right, so from this, right now, like almost all the lighting is coming straight in. So there's nothing really, and this is soft lighting anyway, but there's not really anything defining your face. So can you rotate your whole chair? Like, you guys see like the shadows from this side? Oh. So if I hold this, like this, see how it opens up the shadows on, mm -hmm. on that side of his face? And the, sil like, uh, the reason I got a silver and a white one is because the silver works really good from a continuous light source where you can actually see the results so then you can figure out the exact angle that actually bounces it. But the white, uh, but silver, you have to be able to aim it. So if you're using flashes, they're only on for a second and you can't really see how you're bouncing it. And if you get the angle wrong, it's, it's really not doing anything. So when I'm using the flashes, I use the white side. And you can still see it does a little bit, but it's, it's, not as, it's not as intense as the silver one. So the silver one works really good for sunlight. And because it's so reflective, you can actually, if you have someone help you, they can be quite a ways out of the picture and still direct the, the light 
perfectly so that it so that it hits, and then that way you can do like a full a full body portrait or something like that. So, uh, Bjorn, would you mind no. being my bio stand? So if you can hold hold it and like for the first one, don't bother actually like worrying about getting the. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I'm going to do one with and without. So we do point in any direction. No, right now I want to take one without it, and then I'll have you aim it, and I'll and I'll take one with it. All right, and look at me. Okay, and now for this one, use the silver side, mm -hmm. and then try and uh, and come forward a little bit. Yeah. Me? Yeah. No, just him. Yeah. Yeah. And this is with. Yeah, so it basically opened up the shadows a lot. Um, if you, if, since this is such soft lighting, this would be a case where I wouldn't use it at all because it's like, this is how the old portrait artists who didn't have flashes and they had the crappy old cameras, they used giant window lighting. All of their studios, they would build them so that they had uh, a window on the side of the building that led in this soft light. So that's just soft enough and large enough that it, is perfect, so I wouldn't have used a reflector unless I was going for a very specific look. But if this was sunlight streaming straight in, it would be really hard, and the the, the reflector would be really good for kind of like uh, filling in the the shadows. So another like concept to explain, and if you got if you want to sit, you know, it'll be a while before I need the reflector again. Um, is the size of the light determines um, how hard the shadows are. Uh, so if you're talking about um, like anything other than the sun, because the sun's just too far away. So the way to imagine it is you picture wherever your light source is as the radius of a sphere. So the subject is the center of the sphere, and wherever your light source is is the outer circumference of it. So the larger that light source is on the surface of that sphere, the more diffuse or the softer the edges of the shadows will be. So even though this is, these windows are quite far from where he is, they cover a huge portion of the surface of this sphere around him. Whereas if I have this flash like this, and I put it really, or I put it like this, the flash itself is only this big, so the shadow edges are going to be really, really harsh. So you're, it's, it's, it's a specific look you can go for, and you can use a bare flash, but most of the time it's better to increase the apparent size of the flash, and that's what light modifiers are for. So the easiest way would be to just aim it like this and use either the wall or <coughs> the ceiling as a light source. So it would hit that surface, and now all of a sudden the light source looks like it's the size of the ceiling, and it would be a lot softer. So whereas if, same thing, if I turned same everything, kept all the settings the same and aimed it directly at him, then all the highlights and everything would be really hard etched. So the, the one that I like the most is a, a white umbrella. And it's, this is a special flash umbrella, so it doesn't have any handle to it. And this one actually came with a, um, a black surface to it. So you can um, either shoot into it so it bounces off with the black cover on, or you can shoot through it with the black cover off or you can take just half of the black cover off and kind of use it as like a light source that hits just the face but not like the lower part of the body. So I want to show first like what the, the flash looks like um, bare. So these are um, uh, the, the least you need to use off-camera lighting is a single flash, uh, batteries to power it, and a cord that goes straight from the flash to your camera. And these are um, Vivitar 285 HVs, and they're designed from the 1970s, so you can get them for like 90 bucks, something like that, they're real cheap. Um, and they last forever. My dad still has his from the 70s, and it still works. Um, they're really durable, and they can be modified because they've been out for a long time. So whereas this one has the default um, regulator, this controls how strong it is, this one doesn't have it anymore, and I've built one inside of it that gives me more options from like to, to, to lessen the amount. 
The downside is that this doesn't talk to the camera at all. All that happens is when you press the button, they go off. So there's no evaluative metering, nothing does anything on its own. You have to specify exactly how strong it should be and you adjust the camera if, if, it's, if it needs small adjustments. Um, the benefit is that you get a lot cheaper and uh, sometimes more powerful. So to get a, a flash that's as strong as this one at, at full power, you have to get the 550EX from Canon, and we're all Canon users in here, um, and that's like a $400 flash, something like that. So this one was, I got my entire set, everything for the price of one of those flashes. So with a cord, you're, you're directly connected, um, and that's the cheapest way, but you can also get what are called wireless triggers, and they go everything from like, Opter has the radio ones, which are really cheap, they're like, what, $50 for a set, something like that. So these are like a step up, and these are like $180 for a set, and then $100 for every extra uh, trigger that you need. Um, and then the, like, the best ones are the pocket wizards, and those are 200 and some each and you need one for every camera and one for every flash uh, to set them up. But those ones have further range than these and they're even more reliable, but I've never had these misfire and these are much smaller, so I like them better. So There's when no I- range on this? Uh, 150 meters. Oh. So it's, I mean, I've done it. The thing I like about not having a cord is I did a shoot uh, with August where he was on my balcony one of the flashes was inside the window to look like light coming out of the house. One was down on the ground aiming up to look like a street light. And I was across the street with a zoom lens up, aimed up at him. And there, I didn't have to run like all this cable. It was just, you know, wireless triggers. Um, so I'm going to do, and then, uh, on these, they have uh, these what are called zoom settings. And on um, the Canon and Nikon first party, where like made by them flashes, it's motorized because they need to know the zoom that affects how bright the flash should go. But because these are just so old, it's just plastic that pulls in and out. Um, and this affects how wide it spreads the beam, and that also affects like how powerful it is. So the, so the further out it is, the narrower the beam you'll get, but all of the light will be concentrated that way. Whereas if you went like this, you would get less of the light actually on him but you would also light a, a larger portion. And what's really nice about that is if you're aiming at the ceiling, you can control the size of the <coughs> ceiling light. So if it's wide, you're gonna hit almost all the ceiling and it'll bounce down. But if it's, te uh, if it's zoomed out, you're only gonna hit kind of like a, a smaller circle on the ceiling and it'll, it'll provide less light. So uh, a quick concept to explain is your sync speed, and that's the fastest shutter speed your camera can do um, when it's completely open for the flash to go off. So a flash's duration is like an eight thousandth of a second. So no matter what your shutter speed is, the flash will have gone off in just a fraction of how long your shutter was open. Because sync speed is normally at one two fiftieth of a second or one two hundredth. Like mine and yours, it's two fiftieth. Uh, you have the 400D, and you have the 350 or 400? 400. 400, okay, so yours is uh, two hundredths of a second. So at one two hundredths of a second, the, uh, there's two doors on the shutter, and when you click the trigger, one goes up, and then the other one follows, and that's the picture, and then they both return. So then you take another picture, one goes up, one comes down, like that. So that's, that's, this is when the, the sensor is exposed. If you go faster than your sync speed, it, as soon as this one will start, and before it gets all the way to the top, the other one will follow and then like this. And if you go too high, like say four thousandth of a second, this one will start and only get this far away, and then the other one will start up like this. And what that does is when, say, you're at four thousandth of a second, each pixel is only shown the scene for a four thousandth of a second. Because it would just be too fast to have uh, to actually me mechanize a shutter that would open and close fully in a four thousandth of a second. So the problem is, if you have opened and this one's already coming up, when the flash goes off, the flash hits this part and you get black at the bottom of your sensor. So you can only use the flash as long as you're at a speed or slower when the whole sensor is open. So for you two, it's 200th, 180th, 160, 100, all the way down to however much, but no higher. And then on ours, it's 1 250th. And some of the older big cameras could do 1 500th. 
and some cheaper cameras only do like 1 1 uh, and then if you go to electronic cameras like the Canon G9 it doesn't actually use a, a shutter it just turns the sensor off so it can sync all the way to like a four thousandth of a second so some people even though they're kind of crappy cameras compared to a SLR they'll use that when they want to bring like a really bright sky down really really dark because the flash is the same brightness no matter what shutter speed because it the entire thing went off in the time the shutter was open whereas if you want to darken the flash you change your aperture so you go from like 2.8 to 4 or from 4 to 5.6 so you have control over the ratio of the ambient light and the flash by changing your shutter speed so I normally start at the sync speed like 1 2 50th I get my flash intensities correct and then if I want more ambient, like I want the background or the sky or something to be brighter, I just start moving down my shutter speed, two hundredths, one at one one eightieth, one one sixtieth. And every time I go down, the flash brightness doesn't change, but the background comes up in brightness. But most of the time, if I'm lighting the person, I want the background kind of dark to begin with. So I start at the high amount and I just let it in if I, if I want any more. So it's fairly bright in here, and I'm uh, so I'm starting at uh, a two hundredths of a second, and I'm going to turn this kind of low. Right. Yeah, oh, it did. Oh, okay. I just need to make it brighter so I can actually see it. Darker. So this is called chimping because you look like a chimpanzee when you're looking down at it every time. Uh, and I've, one thing that's difficult to work with when you're shooting someone who might not be comfortable in front of the camera is when you go to examine, uh, you want to keep engaged with your subject because otherwise they, they feel like they're being judged by like, oh, was it good, was it good? So you want it to be a non-issue when the camera goes off so that you can keep up your uh, report with the, with the subject. All right, so I'm gonna, so you can see how how sharp the nose, your nose shadow is on this one. Yeah. <coughs> Should we move to this one? Yeah. No. Sure. Mm -hmm. So you can see how how sharp the nose shadow is on this one, and you can see what I was talking about, where the nose shadow doesn't all the way connect with the cheek. Mm -hmm. So if I if I was determined to use this. Uh, all of these settings and the only thing I wanted to change was the angle of the flash I would want to bring it around either further this way so that the nose shadow connected with the cheek shadow or I would want to bring it around further this way so the nose shadow got smaller um, I like how much this essentially reveals of his uh, of his facial features so it puts the shadow on the other side so what I'm going to do instead of um, uh, moving the flash is I'm actually going to soften the light. So this goes into uh, this is called an umbrella swivel and it basically just goes on the top of your stand and holds an umbrella and you can choke it up or down and these are really cheap so it's like twenty dollars for one of these swivels just this part right here and then uh, you can get these stands for as cheap as like $30. Um, you can get all this stuff here in Iceland too. I think you can get a kit of the umbrella, the stand, and the swivel in a case for 10000 something like that. Something like that. Mm -hmm. So you would you'd need to get your own flash, but then you'd have a full, a full stand for it. So an umbrella actually cuts out about one and a half stops of light. So I'm just going to turn it up two settings so that it's like counteracts for how how bright it is or how how much darker it makes it. Yeah, probably close my eyes. But see how the how much soft so see how you can see how much how much softer the nose shadow is now. Yeah. And all the light actually so this will not only cut down on like specularity, so if you've got someone whose skin is really oily or uh, someone who's like darker skin than Caucasian, like someone who's black or uh, 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 Hispanic, you know, oftentimes you'll get really bright specularity. So this was 
uh, with without the umbrella, and then this is with. So you can see how you're still seeing shadows on the right side of the face, and the right side of his nose is still really dark. Mm -hmm. But now, not only are the hot spots less hot, but the shadow edges are a lot softer. Mm -hmm. So I, or do you have a question? What's the sense of the difference of shooting through the umbrella or, or just turning it the other way around and bouncing off it? Uh, it's actually, it, it depends on really the distance that you want to shoot the person at. The nice thing about the white one is you can put it all the way until this is barely touching his face like this. Mm -hmm. So, whereas if it's the other way around, you can only get as close as the, the bar, oh. essentially, would then poke him in the eye. So this is that this goes into that uh, idea of the, the surface of the sphere. So because of how close this is on him, then the sphere is like essentially this big, and this is filling up a huge portion of it. So if I were to instead do this, now this is essentially as close as I can get to him, and the, and the sphere is much larger, so it looks smaller. Mm -hmm. Now, if you are going to try and light a group, or if I wanted to hit his entire body, or uh, that kind of thing, then I would use um, my silver umbrella. And this one, uh, it doesn't lose as much light, mm -hmm. and uh, it's mainly made for bouncing. So it's the difference between this and this. Mm -hmm. So it's just a black umbrella with silver on the inside. Mm -hmm. And I oftentimes will use that when, like, if I wanted to put some light on this side of them, I'd use the, um, the silver umbrella because it's really efficient and it, um, uh, it, yeah, all it does is it serves to make the light size look larger. Um, oftentimes you want your rim light, which is like your back accent light, to be a bit harder. Mm -hmm. And a different, so like hard and soft light, soft light is the umbrella. So everything's real soft, the edges and the shadows are soft. Hard light is like sunlight, where you get these really hard edges, or the bare flash, that's, that's hard light. So you have to decide how you want to treat the person. Like, do you want soft light? Do you want soft rim light? Do you want hard light? Do you want hard rim light? So for example, if you've seen those black and white portraits that I've done, I use the white umbrella for the mane, and I get it as close as possible so that it puts up, so that everything is really, really soft. And then I use a, um, a hard rim light so that it hits all the hairs and the, and the, like the pores of the skin and becomes really hard on the edges. Mm -hmm. um, I could make both of them soft, but then you would get not quite as uh, mm -hmm. sharp of an edge. So I'm gonna also, now I'm going to show what you would get if I put this a lot closer than I did the first time. And this is also going to show uh, light is, uh, uses an inverse square law. So basically every time you double the distance away, you quarter the light. Or is that, is that right? Or is it you half and then it becomes a quarter? I think it's a quarter. So essentially if you want to make the light brighter, you can just move it closer. So if this light wasn't bright enough, I could just move him closer to the window. And then if I don't like this uh, um, uh, umbrella or the, the light from here, I don't think it's bright enough because it's just him, I can just move it closer. Um, another, another thing that you can do, especially if you only have one flash, is you can um, use the ambient as your first flash, especially if it's direct. So like sunlight, you can use that as, say, one light coming in from one side, and maybe you even want to use that as a hair light. I think that's really nice. So a hair light is something that comes in from somewhere from the back side and, and hits in a way that you can either see it through the hair or you can see it just on the rim of the hair. So sunlight is really good for that. You basically just have them stand so that the sunlight is either coming directly on the back or so that it's coming kind of at an angle so that you see like a little bit of it on the side. And then normally if you took a picture like that, their face would be black. So you would either have to brighten all your settings until the sun and everything blows out. You could use a reflector to reflect it back onto them, or you could use a flash as another light source. Um, so I, I like to do that oftentimes. So since both of these are coming from the same direction, I'm going to keep them there so I can show you the difference, but normally I would use this as my uh, soft one side light and I would rotate this over to the other side so I would get kind of 
kind of two lights to it. So I'm going to put this a lot closer, like this. And now you can see the difference between the brightness between the two. As well as if you, um, you really zoom in, you can see the shadows got. So you can see on this one it's kind of very like directional and you can still kind of see the shadows. On this one you can't really see the edges of the shadows at all and it's mostly right on your head and it, and it doesn't reach down as far because the distance from the umbrella from here to your head is very short but the distance from here to the rest is very little. So this was with the umbrella uh, far away. Or this was the original one with the hard shadow on the face. And then this was the one with the umbrella far away. Mm -hmm. And then this is the one with it close. You can see how much brighter it got. Nothing else changed. And then this is the one with it adjusted. So see how much brighter it is on his face and the rest of his mm -hmm. arms. And you can see, you can't even see the edges of the shadow. You can see it's hitting this side of the face a little bit, mm -hmm. but you can't tell where the shadow of the nose is. But you do see that there's dark on this side of the face mm -hmm. compared to light on this side. So that's, um, that's a good case when you want uh, to emphasize softness. Like mm -hmm. uh, if it's a woman and you don't want to show that she's old, you would use uh, soft light like this. Sometimes if you, uh, babies, or even like women who have perfect skin, but you want everything really bright and soft, you can use a light like this. But if you want to emphasize someone's uh, wrinkles or pores or anything like that, then you would want to either move the light further away or take the umbrella off or use something that kind of reveals the texture. So the soft light will still show definition. You still see the shadow side of the face, but you, um, but it, it softens it, uh, and and you can use that just by the distance that you that you move the light away from the person. Um, so, do you guys have any questions so far? Okay. Um, so I'm gonna show uh, the difference between having both of the ambient and this on one. Or actually, I'm gonna uh, overpower the ambient, which is. The ambient is the light that was already in this room. So it's basically anything, or I define it as anything that was not the artificial lights. Yeah, so, so the, the sky, the lights in the ceiling, that was everything already here. So what I'm going to do is crank up the power of the flash, and then, uh, how are we doing for time? What time is it? Uh, it's 20 minutes to Okay, so basically 21 minutes. All right. So because I pushed up the power of the flash two stops, I'm going to push up the uh, power of my uh, aperture two stops darker. So the light of him shouldn't change at all, but the background should get darker. So are two stops on the flash equal to two stops on the aperture? Yes. Yeah, yeah. so basically, well, I've got mine. Uh, my camera, you can choose whether you want to move in third stops or half stops. Mm -hmm. And when I'm trying to figure out brightness, I found third stops were just too much for me to think of. I was never going, oh, this would be perfect if it was just a third of a stop darker. Mm -hmm. you know, so I, I, I switched it to only do half stops. So I switch from, uh, like, it goes from 30 to 45 to 60 to 90 to 125, whereas mm -hmm. before it had, like, two stops between. And then instead of going from, um, uh, from 3.5 or from 2.8 to... 3 to 3.6 to 4. It just jumps from 2.8 to 3.5 to 4. Mm -hmm. So it's just, you're essentially, uh, if you move one stop in one direction, you're either making it twice as bright or half as bright. Mm -hmm. So by getting a half stop, you, you have a smaller adjustment level, and a third stop, you have an even smaller one. So uh, the default flash on this, it only has full power, half power, quarter power, and then 16th power, and it skips an eighth and it doesn't go any darker. And I was finding that was not enough control. So this one has, uh, this knob is a 12 stop knob. It has 12 um, uh, metal connections and one in the center. So when you rotate it, it changes which one of the outside ones is connected to the inside. So each one of the outside uh, metal tongs has a resistor attached to it, and the resistor is the right amount to change the flash in full stop increments. 
So this one goes from full power, half, quarter, eighth, sixteenth, thirty second, all the way down to ten twenty four in one stop increments. The Canon 580 lets you go in like third stop increments, so you can get really fine tuned what power you need. But with the flash, I find if I want a little fine bit of control, I'll just move the flash a little bit mm. further or closer. So here, everything was exactly the same, except for you can see um, I changed the aperture 2.5 to 4.5. So see how your face and your, is the same brightness, but now the background is darker. So it went from looking like a, a, a gray, light gray or a white background to now it looks like a dark gray or middle gray background. So I basically, I pumped up, the, so this is the, the previous photo, and I just pumped the flash up two stops and brought the aperture uh, down two stops. So yeah. his face is the same brightness, but the background is now darker. And that's, um, and all I had to do, now let's say that I wanted this aperture in order to keep all of his body in focus or maybe you know it was a, a, a group photo and there were two people and their heads were at slightly different distances and I needed this aperture to keep both of their heads in focus. If I wanted the background to now be brighter like say it was a sunset or maybe it was a dark bar or something like that without changing anything else I can just change my shutter speed mm -hmm. from 125 down to 90 and now the depth of field won't change, the brightness on them from the flash won't change. The only thing that will change is the background will get brighter because the flash has still had time for the whole thing to hit while the shutter was open. So none of that changes. It's just how long did the ambient have time to come in and hit the sensor. Mm -hmm. And if I and because I was at 125, if I thought that um, the background is not dark enough, uh, at, like say it's a really cool sunset and I want to bring the clouds down until I can see a lot of contrast between them or maybe the background something really brightly lit um, I can I can go from 125 up to 180 or up to 250 and that will bring the background down even darker so I it's pretty good practice I think to start at as fast as you can and go down because you very if you're deciding you need flashes you very rarely want to make the background uh, brighter so or, I'm sorry you very rarely um, want to make it even darker than you can. Mm -hmm. You're, you, you always want to make it as dark as you can, and then very rarely you let a little bit more light in. There. That's what I meant. So I'm going to take it now at 250 to, to see how much darker I can make the background even more. So, actually, I might have switched to 4.5, sorry. So really the brightness on you didn't change at all, but the background went down even darker. Yes. Um, and if I and what you can also do to do that even more, so this was just changing the, the um, shutter speed from 125 to 250, the background went even darker. If I wanted to make it darker still when you're in the inside, we could just move everything, him, the flash, and me, further away from the wall, and it would go darker. Because then the flash has not had time it, or it gets it gets dimmer the further away it is, so now the background's really dark. So some people will actually have a gray or a light gray studio background, mm -hmm. and then that way they can make it look white by putting a flash directly on it, mm -hmm. or they can make it look dark by just putting the flashes really close and overpower everything else. So I like the um, the way the flash is hitting his face now. I might bring it a little bit further around like this, and a little bit further down so that more of the, I see more of a highlight in his eyes, but now I want to put a, uh, a rim light on the other side. So I'm going to use this one, and I want to make sure that it hits like a lot of him. So if I put it close, you're going to get like a hot spot and it'll fade. But if I put it further away, it'll be fairly even across all of him. And you can use that to your advantage. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'll, I'll switch to a snoot, which is just a cardboard tube. Like this. this is just made out of a cereal box with tape over it. <laughs> and this way, you can limit uh, how much of him is hit. So maybe I just want a rim light right on the head, but not anywhere else. So you can use this as like a way to direct a bit more light. So I'm going to put this.
And because of, um, I, I don't want this to overpower that one, I put it all the way to 1 16th, like as dark as this one will go. So now you can see we've got the, the rim light opening up the other side. So it does a lot to separate you from the background, as well as now it's defining even more of like this skull structure of the side without getting rid of the, uh, the shadows. So see how when I brought it down, now you've got the highlight in the eyes plus the uh, highlight from the side. So this is the previous one, and see how whenever you don't get a highlight in the eyes, it kind of makes the, the person look a bit sinister or mysterious. Mm -hmm. So you can use that when you want, but if it's supposed to be like a nice formal portrait, it's good to be able to get the catch lights. So this one, you actually have the, the, the highlights in the eye, which serves to make it look more upbeat and happy. Which happens when you lower the yeah. temper. Yeah, so you, most of the time you have to pay attention to how deep their eye sockets are. So if you're at a 45-45, like a, uh, someone who doesn't have very deep eye sockets will, will get the highlight. But like uh, the, the essentially the further away from the edge of the skull or the brow line their eyes are, the, the further down you have to bring it. Yeah, so it's just basically like the, one of my friends has extremely deep ones and I had to put it almost even with the face. But you can see how much um, the, that rim light does to open up the side of the face. So even though this one has like a certain kind of mood to it that you might want by having so much of the face in the shadow, by having that uh, rim light, it really serves to um, kind of open it up. So the next cool thing you can do with uh, flashes is you can color them so that you get a specific feel. So I'm gonna switch my white balance to flash. Uh, your white balance, I normally just keep it in auto mode, but you can purposefully warm or cool a uh, scene with your white balance. Mm -hmm. So if you have no flash at all, you just want it to look as neutral as possible most of the time, but if you have a flash, oftentimes you wanna emphasize something. So since this light is very neutral, it's just, gray, the flash is gray, that flash is gray. There was a little bit of warmth to this one because from the sun, so it kind of makes the, I think you can probably see it, see how the front of your face looks kind of warm and the rim light looks a tiny bit cool? Uh, it's because the rim light is only flash, which is essentially pure white, mm -hmm. and the, um, the uh, fill light has some of the, of the uh, window coming in, which is a tiny bit warm. So it makes it look like the flash is blue, even though it's essentially pure white. But what I want to do is actually throw it more towards cool, so that you have the, the contrast of the, uh, the warm part of the face and the cool part of the, of the rim light. So uh, with contrast, there's essentially seven contrasts, and they have, it's like value and size and uh, intensity, all of that. But the important ones for light are color, saturation, and value. So with value, it's your ratio, like how bright is this one, how bright is that one, you know, how bright is the ambient light. So you can say, I want this one really strong and that one really uh, weak or opposite, or both of them the same. You can also say what color you want them. And when they're contrasting colors, it does even more to pop stuff apart. And because this is a 2D plane, we can kind of use all the help we can get with making things uh, have more dimension. So these are uh, colored gels, and uh, I got these from Exton for free because they're just like a sample kit. And these are the exact size that slides into these flashes uh, if you build up the sides with electrical tape. So this is just electrical tape uh, over on it. So I picked out all the ones I want. This one's like the color of sunset. Um, and most people use essentially green, blue, and orange. Orange is to balance against candles and old-fashioned tungsten bulbs because they are kind of orange. Uh, green is used for fluorescent lights because they have a bit of a green tinge to them. And blue is to kind of match daylight. And then you can also use them to color the light. So sometimes if you feel that the uh, 
the sunlight is warm and you want your flash to look like it's also sunlight, you can warm it as well. And now they'll both be the same color. And if you want, you can neutralize that and they'll both look pure white. But if you left your flash with no color on it and the sunlight was warm, you would have a warm light source and a cool light source. And if you made the warm light neutral, you'd make the cool light even cooler, like even more blue. And if you made the and if you warmed up the cool light to be neutral, you would have the warm light ultra orange. So by matching them both, you can essentially neutralize them both if you want. Uh, or you can go the opposite and push them to another range. So I keep um, an eighth blue and an eighth orange with me as part of my kit. So the eighth orange warms a little bit and the eighth blue cools a little bit. And it's referring to how strong it is. So like this one's an eighth, if you can see blue at all, and this one's a half. So this one is essentially four times more blue than this one. And it also comes with uh, full blue when you really want it to look blue. And you can also stack them. So this is like whatever that fraction is. A big art. So, and these just slide in right over the flash. Now, the reason I put this in uh, flash as the white balance is it won't try to correct for the blue. Uh, normally, the way these things work is they, uh, whatever the brightest color is, it, uh, or the brightest value, it thinks of that as the light source, and it looks to see what color tint it is, and tries to neutralize that if it's in auto white balance. So if you put it in flash, it will assume that flash color is neutral, and it won't try and remove the color cast of this other flash. So now, I'm not sure if you can see it, see how it made the left half even more warm while keeping the right half of your face much cooler. Sure. So we just get these uh, gels. From uh, Extum, it's the, the theater lighting place right, ac right across. So this is the one with no, with no gels, and this is the one with. Whoa. So, so it, it, the, um, it served to warm up this side, mm -hmm. because before the, the sunlight was, let me, let me actually, um, well, I can kind of explain it. So this light is a little bit warm, so before it was trying to neutralize it, mm -hmm. and that was essentially cooling everything and making mm -hmm. the right side look a little bit cool. Whereas since this one was at flash, it essentially assumes everything is neutral, so any color comes out. So it made the window light even more warm, and it uh, also didn't subtract from the blue of the side. So I'm going to say this is actually not blue enough, so I'm going to swap it out with the, with the um, half blue. And at the same time, I'm going to put the snoot on and restrict it to just What so, kind of cereal box? Uh, Lucky Charms. So what you can do, to, if you want to figure out where it's going to go, is you, if you can see the flash, it will hit that part. So if I go down this low, I can't see the flash head anymore, so it's not going to reach down here. I can see it here, and now I can't see it up here. So that's like the distance that it's going to be able to go. Um, you can also get what's called a, a grid. And what that does is it's like a series of small little parts, and you, it has the same effect but in a shorter length. So you can just glue a bunch of black straws together and use that to restrict the light as well. So whereas before there was rim light on his arm as well, now it's, not gonna, it's only going to be like on the top part. So now you can see it's, ex it's really blue on your side, and see how now it's not on your arm anymore. So this was before, and now this is even the, the stronger blue. You can see how the color comes out more, and it's not on his arm anymore. It's just on the side of the face, and it's not even really reaching his neck anymore. Mm -hmm. and, and you are yeah, you're purposely making the rim light Bluer. Yeah, because so, now you feel like a, this, there's this really strong contrast oh, between oh. the warm and the cold mm -hmm. of the blue. And you can do the opposite, which is really fun. Uh, if the day is really overcast like this, 
and you don't think it's interesting, but you want like mountains and sky or whatever in the background, you can set your white balance to uh, tungsten, which is the, it's the picture of the light bulb. So what you're saying is, my light source is really orange, I want you to neutralize it. But your light source isn't orange, it's, it's white. But the way it neutralizes orange is it pushes everything colder, it makes it bluer. So even though everything was gray, if you set it to tungsten, now everything gets pushed over to be strong blue. So you, all you've done is change your, your, um, your uh, white balance and you get blue everything. But now you can colorize your main flash to actually have the color of tungsten. You put your, your full, one, uh, full power orange on it and it will be neutralized. So you'll get this very neutral white colored light on the person themselves and all your background will be really, really blue. And so now instead of having a really ugly gray background, you've had blue. And you can do the opposite by setting it to um, like a custom, there's not really an equivalent color that warms everything. You can kind of put it towards shade and then you put blue on your light source and it'll make everything look really orange and warm, but the face will look very uh, uh, white and neutral. So when I first got my flashes, I just tried everything. I put bright green on one and bright purple on the other and just tried it and, and sometimes I put an umbrella on one side, a snoot, sometimes I used them both hard. Um, I tried one the other day where I had uh, both flashes were bare behind aiming towards the side and then I was in front shooting towards and I held the reflector so the light was coming in like this off the side of the head hitting the reflector I was holding to fill the front and then I was taking the picture and they both were really strong blue so I got hard blue rim light and just enough to where you saw some of the features and because of how strong they were the background was just gone there was nothing in the background it just looked black um, and just because you have, maybe you have either just yourself or a dog or a cat or something, just if you practice a whole bunch, you'll figure out like what, what color do I like. Like this one is not one that I've seen many people use because it's so strongly colored, but I like to use it as a rim light. And if you get the angle correct, it kind of looks like you've got a sunset lighting kind of coming in from the side. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it has a very warm feel to it, and then you just use a very natural colored uh, fill light, and, and it'll still look like a person's normal skin color and everything like that, but you get the, uh, the sunset light color from the side. Um, well, you're, when you're doing this, do you play with the white colors on your machine, or do you just do it in Lightroom at the end of the day? Um, I play with it in here. If, I, if I'm coloring the flashes at all, I put it to flash colored, uh, their flash white balance. So then the color of the flashes will show up. For instance, when I did the two blue rim lights, if I put it on auto, it would have just warmed the thing until the lights looked like they were white and it would have taken all the blue out of the scene. So I left it on flash and it didn't try and touch anything. It, like If you set it to anything other than white, it thinks it knows the color because you told it and it will just remove or add warm or cool to correct for it. So if you put something that's wrong, you will get to see that wrong color mm. untouched. So if I put this to white and took everything off the flashes and just used the bare flashes, they would look perfectly white because those are flash, this one's on flash. Mm. So the second I introduce any kind of color to it, you, st you see the color. Mm. Yeah. But the only time I mess with it, uh, change it away from flash, so I'm trying to do those purpose colorations, like if I put warm on here and I want to throw everything else to look blue, mm -hmm. I'll put it to tungsten, but I've mm -hmm. only done that a couple of times.